Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a few of the items that I've picked up from random job lots over the past sort of uh, few weeks from the auctions. So essentially, the prices, I'm just going to sort of say that most of these items have cost me between 50p and about 2 or £3 in job lots. However, there will be a few items that I will actually tell you more specific prices on because I've either got them in smaller job lots and I've paid up on them or I've got obviously them in a single job lot. So essentially, most of the items you're going to see that are maybe the more standard items are just going to be anywhere between about 50p and £2 or £3 average cost. And then, as I say, I will tell you prices on some of the individual stuff. Anyway, with that being said, I also want to put a bit of a disclaimer out there. I still am learning with antiques and stuff, so don't take this information as given. This is just the information that I currently have to hand. Some of that may be right, some of that may be wrong. If you have any other information or any more information, then please do drop that in the comments section because obviously I don't want to be giving away um, you know, unfactual information if unfactual is even a word. I don't know. Anyway, with that being said, we shall get on with this whole video. So, first off, I don't know how well these are going to come out with the green screen, actually. I didn't really plan for that. But anyway, um, these are, uh, what are they called? Tavala, Tavola, um, handmade in Hungary, Ajaka glass. That's what it says, anyway, A-J-K-A. A jack of glass. I'm going to hold it up to me here so you can actually see. So it's kind of like a yellow here, um, and it's obviously like a champagne flute. If we give it a little ring, obviously it has like quite a nice ring, but um, I don't know whether it's exactly crystal. I did look on um, a few of like a few of the listings on eBay, and it did say crystal. As I say, when I do give it a ring, it does have quite a nice ring, so it very well could be crystal. Um, but yeah, quite nicely cut. Obviously, if I feel the pontal underneath, I believe I'm feeling like a polished pontal. That's what it feels like to me. It's definitely not a rough pontal or anything like that. So, essentially, I've looked online. They're really... Um, there's not much information there. There's a few solds, but they're international solds. I don't believe there's been any sold in this country. But I did see one glass, which was slightly different to this, go for like 70 quid or something. And then there was a couple of glasses that went for, well, there were sing two single listings of one glass each that went for about £23 each. So I really don't know where I stand on these. So if anyone, you know, has any information on glass, or is a bit more uh, well-versed in glassware than I am, then I'd appreciate any information you could give me on these. But at the same time, I'm thinking maybe roughly about 40 to £50 pound on the pair is where I'm going to go at this current moment. But as I say, I might do a bit more research into these just to um, give me a bit more grounding on the actual uh, glass itself and obviously on the company. So yeah, uh, that's those. So I've got two of those. I have been talking about two of them. I have actually got two of them. The other one is down here. So there we go. Doesn't seem to be any chips or cracks or any imperfections on them, so that's always good. So next we've got something that isn't really very exciting. It's just one of these pieces of like um, studio pottery kind of thing. It's not a very good piece of studio pottery necessarily. Well, I may be being a little bit harsh there. I mean, someone's obviously handmade this, so I've, you know, I shouldn't really say that. But um, what I mean is that it's not like a really desirable piece. Um, but yeah, it's been handmade in Portugal. It, as you can see by the label there, um, it's not really like a really high desirable one, but I've had similar ones of these before, and you generally get about a tenner plus postage because people still do like these, and especially like something like this, you could, you, I suppose you, you wouldn't necessarily use it for fruit or something like that, but you could use it on like a little table or something, and you could put a few bits of things on there. Um, so people like these for little displays or little bits of decorative pieces. Um, so yeah, I'll probably whack that on for a tenner plus post and be done with it. Um, it is a hand-painted piece as well, so it's, you know, it's okay. So that's that one anyway. So next I've got this... Uh, little guy there, I don't know whether you can see him, see him in all his glory, kind of got these um, little things coming off his hat like an Australian would, um, but it's really nice, it's a ceramic uh, little statue, it's very heavy actually, um, and I've not seen any of these on solds, um, he's got a little bucket there with him as well, um, but as I say, I've not seen any of these on solds, I would imagine 
that I'm just going to shoot for about 12 to 15 quid plus postage. I just make up a price on things like this and then someone will come along at some point, give them the right keywords in the title and end up purchasing him just because they like him. Maybe it's for a decorative purpose or something like that. But yeah, generally I just make up a price of things like this. It is quite a nice one though. I don't think, no, there isn't any sort of maker's mark on there. Probably just like a local potter or something like that, you know, uh, in some sort of area would have made this. I'm not sure though. But yeah, anyway, so that's that. Nice little item at the end of the day. It is quite well done to be honest. It's quite a nice little... Uh, little figure. I don't know if I hold it up right to the, I don't know where it's going to focus, but you might be able to see on his beard, it's not really focusing very well, but they've done like really fine little um, like markings in his beard, which is quite cool. So yeah, I quite like that. So that's that one. Next, uh, something I actually picked up for free. Obviously these didn't come in the auction, but um, these are the Lego, is it like an Incredible Inventions card from Sainsbury's? Now, you may remember the Create the Word World card from Sainsbury's, which was the Lego cards. I did really well on them, just getting them from Sainsbury's when we were doing a shop, um, and then just putting them on auction, and I'd get like 10 quid, I'd get, I think I'd get like about one pound a pack. So if, you know, for example, we did a hundred pound shop, and then obviously got 10 cards, it'd be like 10 quid in my back pocket. So that's pretty awesome. So I'm hoping that with these ones, it's the same sort of scenario. However, with the Create the World ones, you'll also remember that when the promotion stopped, um, there was like loads of big boxes of 500 going on eBay and the market completely crashed. So I don't know whether that's going to happen with these or whether these are going to be any, there's going to be any value in them whatsoever. But I think I might just whack them on auction and see if I can get any money from them. Considering I didn't pay anything for them, it's just a little bit of extra money at the end of the day. So I thought I'd show you them. So next we've got this uh, sort of, I'm assuming it's hand carved, but I, I, I well, I'm assuming it's hand carved. I'm not 100%, but... It's a, is it Blayton or Clayton Race? I can't read that. Blayton Races. Um, it's a centenary edition sort of wooden plate. Quite nice. It's got like verses around the uh, edges here. So these are verses of a song, all these little sections here. Now, I didn't see any online, which you probably would expect, actually, because obviously it's quite a unique item. It was done in 1962, 9th of June. Uh, sorry. 9th of June 1862 was the actual day, so it, this must have been issued around like, you know, June of 1962, um, obviously done maybe a little bit before then, but yeah, I'm thinking maybe about 15, 20 quid, something like that, it might sit for a while, something like this, but someone's ultimately gonna, uh, gonna pick it up at some point, obviously, again, give them the right keywords on the listing, so yeah, that's that. So next I've got this little sort of, I'm imagining it's a male vanity set, maybe it's a feel, female one as well, well actually no, I know why I'm imagining it's, in, I'm imagining it's a male one, because it's got a shaver and little brush in there, you see that little brush there, um, so yeah it's got like a little shaver in here or something, um, you can see if I can get this back in, you can see on there, don't know whether you can see that actually, I was hoping you'd see that, but it says electric shaver, and then we've got a brush uh, on the opposite side there, and I don't know what this thing is, hmm, little tin of some sort, I don't know what that would be for actually, unless it's to sneak a little bit of tobacco or something in there, I don't know, I don't know, probably far, far off with that, and then we've got a little mirror there, that's kind of seen better days. Oh, there you go. You look. You can see the camera there. Whee! Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that. I with these kind of things, I just generally put a random price on them, like 15, 20 quid, something like that. And they generally go. Like I've had a few vanity sets. I've had a female one, actual female one, a, an ivory, not an ivory one. You can't sell ivory on eBay. An ebony one, um, and that went for like. 20 I think like 15 or 20 so I'm gonna just whack that on at any old price around that sort of area and it should go at some point so yeah quite a nice little one that right so this is something that um, I need to do a bit more research on actually now I don't actually think this is that valuable um, it is Wedgwood and I can never say the other part of it Etrora, Etrora or something I don't know anyway you might be able to see that Etrora E-T-R-U-R-I-A, I think it's spelled. I'm trying to read it backwards here. Um, but yeah, so it's basically um, 
Long Longwood College, Farmville, Virginia. Don't know whether you're going to see that on there. Longwood College. It's got a little sticker on the back of it there that I need to get off as well. Um, and as you can see, it's kind of like, I think it's transfer printed. It should be transfer printed, something like this. Um, and yeah, it did the view of the college, obviously, in a uh, blue and white, you know, standard kind of blue and white. Um, and one is sold in America for like 76 quid. But I'm thinking that that's because it was in America and these are maybe more rare over in America compared to in this country, so I'm actually thinking this is probably only going to be like a 15 quid plate, something like that, maybe even less, but I don't know, I've got to do a bit more research in it, because I don't want to put it on for 15 quid, and then undersell it, so, yeah, it's all about research with these pieces, because I mean, I have, I have undersold quite a lot of stuff while I've been learning, so it's annoying, because you're thinking, you think you've got one price, and you think you've got it right, and then it turns out, oh damn, you haven't got it right, but, for next time when you get it, you think, right, I'm not going to undersell it next time. I'm going to proper go shoot for the moon on it next time. But yeah, anyway, so that's that one. Um, so nothing major special as far as I'm aware, but you never know, it could be. Sorry, the camera went out of focus a bit then. But yeah, so that's that one. Right, so we've got a nice big uh, meat plate, obviously, in the willow pattern there. Um, probably, I'm assuming, like, sort of late 19th century, something like that. Um, obviously, it's quite a heavy one. Quite a heavy duty one there. Nothing on the back. Sometimes you'll get a maker on the back. Um, well, I don't know actually. There's a little, there's a little thing in the in, in the centre there. I'm not sure whether that would indicate. I don't know whether that's like a little maker's mark or something. But I'd have to look into that. And then there's a tiny little thing on the on one part there as well on the underneath. That little bit of blue. Don't know whether that's a, something to do with a maker's mark. But anyway, so generally like these things, obviously it really depends on the maker. If you've got like a good maker, it can be really good money. But like generally these things, 20, 25 quid, something like that. I've sold them in the past for that. But obviously again, it really is dependent on the maker. Uh, it's really dependent on the age of the piece and all that sort of stuff. So it can be like the prices vary wildly but yeah i'm just gonna say about that for this one anyway but it might be more it might turn out to be a bit more than that but yeah it's pretty standard you do see these quite a lot so yeah that's that one anyway right so we've got two of these uh cabri they are actually i looked underneath i've never had these before i can't see it now i'm not in the light properly Carlton ware. So I was, I was quite surprised that these are actually Carlton ware. But these are like the little um, cup chocolate block things. I didn't think they were worth that much. Um, but I, I, I was actually happily surprised to see them in an auction job lot. Because I've never had these before. I've been a reseller for three years and I've not had these. Everyone seems to have these. But yeah, and essentially they're only going to be about tenner for the pair. I'm just going to have to wait on them to be honest. Doesn't seem like there's loads of demand for them. But I did only run a very quick search. So I might have to do a little bit more research, but yeah, probably like 10 plus postage for a pair, something like that. So yeah, quite happy to get them, but as I say, not like masses of money. Right, something now that I thought would be worth more, again, it's a transfer printed plate uh, in that sort of red. Uh, it's quite nice actually, and it has got a uh, good brand to it. It's obviously a good maker to it. Um, it's Mason's there, and it's the Vista, Vista pattern. Um, now I thought this would be worth more than it is, you can see actually on the bottom, though I don't know whether you are going to be able to see, but there's like a little bit of dust and stuff to the bottom here, so I'll have to get that off, but essentially I thought this would be more worth more than it is, maybe about 10 to 15 quid, something like that, but really a lot of, there's, a, there's quite a few of these on for like 5 quid, which is ridiculous, so... Yeah, I was hoping that would be worth a little bit more, um, but it's quite a nice little transfer printed plate there. But this Vista pattern m mustn't be that, um, you know, it mustn't be that attractive. It, you know, other Mason's patterns must be more attractive. So, yeah, um, bit bit disappointed on that one, but still, I might just whack it on anyway, because there's no point. There's no point just getting rid of, rid of it at a car boot or charity shop. I may as well whack it on and just get a fiver for it. But, yeah, it's a bit annoying, that. But, anyway, some things aren't worth as much as you think they are. Right, so we've got a couple of pieces of Paragon next. I absolutely love Paragon. Um, I've not had any of the, like, the really major pieces yet. I'd really love to get, like, one of the really, really nice pieces. I mean, some of the pieces can go for, like, 50 to 100 quid if they're really nice ones. Um, these ones are later pieces. So these are, like, sort of 50s. Uh, I think they, I think Paragon finished in 61 or... It, they, they finished sort of in the 60s anyway. So um, these are sort of later pieces, probably sort of mid to late 50s, something like that. 
Um, but you can see it's a really nice looking plate. We've got this kind of red round here, and then we've got this kind of gold um, gold design kind of round here, which is really nice around the rim there. And then we've got this, um, I don't know what you'd call this. I mean, it could, the right word might be kind of like a beaded design rim. But it's really nice, nice little whim there. And then obviously we've got the front there. I don't know whether this is, can't see. I'm wondering whether, yeah, it looks like that That might be hand painted there. So it might be a hand painted plate. If you catch the, if you catch the light right, you can sometimes see the brush strokes, you see. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Like I've got the light up there and I'm trying to angle the light on it to see if I can see any brush strokes. And it looks like this has been hand painted. So yeah, quite a nice little plate there. You can see that is the logo on the back. I don't know whether it's going to focus. So that's the later logo of Paragon. Um, yeah, by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen. So we know it's like after 1953. Um, but yeah, obviously, as I say, Paragon... Um, I think they closed down in the 60s, so it's like 1953 to, you know, sort of mid-late mid 50s, maybe early 60s at, at maximum. Um, so yeah, that's how you can kind of date this piece. But um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be worth, going to be worth a lot of money. I've not found this specific plate on solds, but I did find some similar ones, and they seem to be only about 10 quid. I might pitch this at a little bit more, maybe 15 quid, and hope that someone... Um, grabs it for that but maybe only a tenner on this which is a shame because I really do like these kind of things it's these things and the thing I'm going to show you next that are going to be more valuable by the time I'm 70 that's what I hope like I hope something like this when I'm 70 is 50 60 quid I think I think that this should be worth that when you know in 40 50 years time but we'll see well we'll see you know I don't know but I'm, I'm just guessing but you see like the Art Deco stuff as well, I think the Art Deco stuff is really going to be worth a lot more in 40 or 50 years time as well because a lot of the Art Deco stuff, it's just terrible how little they go for. I mean, it might be because, I don't know whether it is in fashion at the moment or not, I'd have to look into that, but, um, you know, if it isn't, if it just goes that it isn't actually in fashion at the moment, then when it does come back around again, then the price will obviously go up. But some of the stuff, some of the prices you get for some of the Art Deco stuff these days, it's just terrible. This isn't Art Deco, by the way. I'm just rambling off onto another subject now. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, some of the things I've sold that are Art Deco, but, you know, really, I feel should be worth 40, 50 quid, you can only get 20 or 30 quid for. So it's a bit, it's a bit annoying, but they all come back around and prices go up to where you want them to be again. But anyway, at the end of the day, the market decides the price. I don't decide the price, so I'd be a fool just to charge over the odds and just sit on them forever. Um, so yeah, anyway, so that's that one. I'll get up the other Paragon in a second. So here we go. This is the Grandma's Roses pattern. Obviously, it's like a serving plate, a meat plate. It's quite a large one, quite nice, actually, with this kind of... Um, don't know what you'd call it. it's like a ridge design I, I kind of almost want to say like a scallop design to the uh to the whim there it's kind of like a scallop design or a ridge design to the whim quite nice um i i was trying to see as well on this one before whether it's been hand painted or whether it's transfer printed and i can't really see i'm not 100 percent. i can't see on this light and i tried before in the natural light and i wasn't too sure so i'm not sure whether it's hand it's hand painted or transfer probably hand painted though um and we can see on the back there again we've got the paragon logo with grandma's roses underneath now unfortunately this does have some wear i don't know whether you're gonna see um i don't know whether you're gonna see this if i can point it out where is it on that rose there it's actually turned a little bit white so obviously some of the paint or something's come off well that it might actually indicate that that has actually been hand painted if that that's come off there but yeah that's a bit of a shame it doesn't seem to be worth that much this pattern anyway so it's not like a really desirable paragon pattern i'm thinking maybe 15 quid 20 quid it's unfortunately just not going to be a lot but because of the size of a plate and obviously it's a meat plate i think that i could get a little bit more some of the like the smaller plates and stuff are on for like i think anywhere from about six quid to about 12 quid but obviously as i say this is a bigger piece so i'm hoping maybe i can still get a little bit more for it um despite even that little bit of wear on one of those uh, roses but yeah anyway so that's that one 
Right, so now we are on to the Bezik. I've got a few different Bezik items here. I got a job lot of Bezik dogs, so I'm going to show you a couple of those out of that job lot. I paid 25 plus commission. This was a smaller job lot. So the rest of the stuff you've seen came in like box job lots. So obviously, you know, as I say, about 50p to two or three quid in terms of, uh, you know, prices I've paid if I were to break it down into individual prices for individual items um, but these have actually come from a smaller job lot so I got a few different Bezic dogs I'm just going to show you a couple of them out of the job lot today um, we can see that this one is on a uh, plinth uh, like not well, I suppose it's not a plinth base but on a base it's a ceramic base actually I actually thought this wasn't a ceramic base at first and then I picked it up and I, I realized it was um, you can see, I don't know if you're going to see that very well or not. Well, it, well, it says Bezik England actually quite like impressed in there quite clearly. Um, but yeah, so this is the Spaniel. I'm trying to get that in focus there so you can see. But it says the Spaniel anyway on there. And you can see that this is a matte glaze. Now, if you don't know, the matte glaze is just this kind of glaze that isn't um, as reflective as a, as a gloss glaze. I don't really know how to describe it that well, but essentially... It's a glaze that's like, when you touch it, it's a little bit more rough, whereas the gloss glaze is nice and smooth. But I'm, I've got a gloss glaze piece, so instead of me explaining it in a really terrible way, I'm just going to show you the difference. So, essentially that is a matte glaze right there. And this is a black and a white pattern one. There is also a brown and a white pattern one and I think that the black and white is a little bit more desirable um, going off a few of the prices so essentially I'm going to shoot for about 40 to 50 quid on this one and it may take a while to go there's a few others on there but there's mainly the only ones on there are brown ones I think there's one black and white one but most of the others are brown and white so I'm going to shoot for about 40 to 50 on this plus my postage I'd be happy to get that so it's quite a nice little item there uh, a bit of bezic there so that is a matte glaze and now I'm going to show you another dog a, a Labrador which is a gloss glaze actually you know what I'm going to show you the Bezic horse because the Labrador, I've just realised, is actually Royal Dalton. And although it is a gloss glaze, I'd rather show you, um, I'd rather compare a matte glaze Bezic item with another uh, gloss glaze Bezic item rather than a gloss glaze Royal Dalton item. So anyway, I'll show you the horse first. So yeah, that's the uh, Spaniel there. So this is the horse and you can almost instantly see that it is more reflective and if I kind of just touch it, it's a little bit more smoother as well. Um, so this is the, the gloss and I'll actually see if I can get, this is probably going to be dangerous, you know, knowing me, but I try and get both of them up at the same time so you can see. Right, I don't know how well that's going, but you can see this one, the Spaniel, isn't as reflective, so that's the kind of a matte glaze, and then this sort of horse, which is the gloss glaze, is a lot more reflective, and obviously smoother to the touch as well. So yeah, that's that one. Um, I'm thinking on this one, now this came from a different job lot, this was actually just in a random box, which was very odd, because they put this in, it wasn't in a box actually, it was in like a job lot on a table, but generally we put the Bezic horses like in the cabinet in like very, very small lots. So it was odd that they actually put this one in a larger job lot. But anyway, so I got this in a large job lot, this wasn't with the dogs, um, and I'm hoping to get about sort of 25 quid on this. Um, I don't know the actual name of this model of horse, obviously, all the different models have different names. There's also ones, uh, well not just names, but um, they'll have numbers as well on them. But also, some of them will actually have like um, like proper names. So there's like, I think there's like Spirit of the Wild for one of the horses as well and all that sort of stuff. So essentially, I'm not sure on the name of this one, but I'm thinking it's, you know, it's a fairly standard horse. So I'm thinking maybe about 25 quid is going to be about right on that. Maybe 30 quid, but to be honest, there's a lot of these standard horses around. And I believe that they have come down in value slightly as of recent, the last few years. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's that one. And then finally, we have a um, Royal Dalton. This is 2005 and it's a Labrador. I'll just quickly... Uh, show you that. I don't know if this is going to focus so well for you, but hopefully it will. No, it's not doing it, is it? Not focusing. Anyway, it just says Royal Dalton Labrador RDA 104. I don't know whether 104 is like the, the pattern number or something, or the, 
the model number um, and then it just says copyright 2005 so it's a later Royal Dalton piece um, and as you can see it is just a, a Labrador. They don't seem to go for a lot of money, um, considering that these things new would have been quite a lot of money, would be quite expensive, but they only seem to go for about 20 quid. So I've ju I'm just going to put mine on for 20 quid, and uh, we'll see where we go with that one. Again, that came in the same job lot as the Spaniel there. So the Spaniel, if I do get like 50, if I get top end for it, and that is like top whack, um, if I do get that, then that will pay for the job lot and a bit of profit. And then this will be more profit as well as the other couple of items as well. So, yeah, quite happy with that one. Nice little, uh, obviously, Labrador there. So, yeah. So, that will do it for this video, guys. If you did like it, please do give it a like down below. If you haven't already, then please do subscribe. If you liked this format of auction haul, then please do give it a like, as I mentioned, because it'll let me know that you like this style of video. Also, feel free to drop a comment down below with any you know ed opinion on any of the items you've seen here on the prices i've given on the information i've given all that sort of stuff i'd be happy to have a chat with it with you down in the comment section and i will see you in the next one guys so i'll see you very soon